Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Leading off tonight, dueling banjos. Look who's challenging Sarah Palin as media darling and chief attention grabber on the Republican right, Michelle Bachman. Palin may have matched Bachman last night, however, with her own full moon attack on President Obama's State of the Union. This isn't a battle of SAT scores, ladies and gentlemen. But the stronger President Obama gets, the less valuable the GOP nomination for president might be getting, and the more likely Republicans could go rogue and pick a candidate from their wild side, giving up smart for spark. At some point, it's all about who excites an audience. Our top story tonight, Palin versus Bachman. Start with Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin. Josh Marshall, founder and editor of Talking Points Memo, and Melinda Hennenberger, editor-in-chief of PoliticsDaily.com. Uh, you know, on Greta Van Susteren last night, let's take a look at Sarah Palin. She must have saved this for Fox in this interview. They're talking about the Sputnik moment that President Obama talked about, which everybody remembers, which was, if not remembers, heard about, where the United States got off its butt when we realized the Soviets had gotten out there with the first satellite. Here's her answer. Governor, last night uh, there was a lot of discussion about the Sputnik moment that the president talked about. Um, do you agree with them? Do you feel do you, is is this our moment? That was another one of those WTF moments that when he uh, has so often repeated this Sputnik moment that uh, he would aspire Americans to celebrate, and he needs to remember that uh, what happened back then with the former communist USSR and their victory in that uh, race to space, yeah, they won, but they also incurred so much debt at the time that it, it resulted in the inevitable collapse of the Soviet Union. Well, the Soviet Union, of course, went down, of course, after the failure of the, uh, the attempted coup out there, and Yeltsin stood up against them, standing on the tanks, one of the most heroic moments in history, standing up against the Red Army. That was in 91 in August. Of course, Sputnik was in 1957. So the connection here, let me go to Melinda, the connection between the space race, which began, of course, with Sputnik overtaking our satellite efforts, and then we, of course, killing them in the space race. Why would Sarah Palin, who believes in American exceptionalism, say we lost the space race when everybody on planet Earth knows we got to the moon first, breaking all human history by going to another world, and the Soviets gave up. They gave up. They said, Uncle, we can't do what you guys are doing. And then 40-some years later, they, they, of course, went bottom up economically. What is she talking about? And who's writing this garbage for her? Who puts it in her head? But Chris, Let's start with her. No, don't change the subject. Who's putting this stuff in Sarah Palin's Head. I don't think there's any good evidence that Sarah Palin has much of a team. I think she has uh, yes people and she doesn't have professionals working for her. But anything Barack Obama says, of course, she's going to say is absolutely the opposite of reality. But the thing that I was very offended hearing her talk about the WTF moment. Well, well, that's, I mean, that's, that's so kind of high school. That's so dis or seventh grade. That's so disrespectful of the office that I don't think she's even serious about wanting to run for the presidency. I think that if she were, she wouldn't be speaking in a way that really does not make her look well, like Well, to those who, I, I'm a little slow on this, Melinda. I, I know it's like people say B, BTW, a friend of mine always says, by the way. And some people say, oh my God, OMG. And of course, what the, we're used to that other word. But you're right. Here's a woman running for president, perhaps, talking like this. Josh, what do you make of this? Well, I don't know whether you were offended by her lingo. I think it's childish and it playing to the sort of the peanut gallery with this kind of talk, not really playing it like you're really running for president talking about this kind of stuff. But I'm offended by the absolute, seems to be weird sense of American history we're getting from these people like her and Bachman. The other night, Bachman was talking about how slavery was ended by the founding fathers. We didn't have to have a civil war or any of the fights that were on in the U.S. Congress all through the, the, the early 19th century with the compromises and Henry Clay and all that. None, none of it ever happened. And now we got that we lost the space race to the Soviets and that bankrupt them. Don't they have some floor of knowledge they have to have for these people on the right to think of them as presidential material? Josh. But how can you tell your kid, if you're a conservative, a reasonable conservative, a lot of them out there, would say, my kids have to study in school, because then you may get to be president someday. Were these people with manifest ignorance? 
balloon head, in this case of Bachman, who knows absolutely nothing, running for president. And, and, and like when Kenny Curry says, what do you read? They make that into an insult. What are you talking about? What I read? I don't have to read anything. I know. I, I, I read think... the Old Testament. <laughs> I read the Founding Fathers. And it turns out they don't even read the Bible. Uh, they certainly don't read the Constitution. They don't. They're just trying to be provocative. Obviously, they don't care if they're, it's based anything they say. But are these people that cheer them think? This... Aren't they thinking? <laughs> these people are running for president making fools my, of us? My big question, as uh. I said before about Michelle Bachman is, does she have a staff? Does she not have anybody who would say to you, you know, saying that the founding fathers ended slavery is a okay, let's watch this. statement for Let's all recall make. the reason there was a Republican Party. It wasn't to cut taxes. It was to stop the expansion of slavery into the territories, into the new states, so that it wouldn't become permanent. They wanted to eventually get rid of it. They knew if they got all the new states becoming slave, they'd never get rid of it constitutionally because it takes three quarters of the state to amend the Constitution and end slavery, which is in the Constitution, three-fifths of a person. Here's Michelle Bachman ignoring that whole sweep of 100 years of American history uh, the other night, getting her I'm not even facts. Let's not call facts in any way related to Michelle Bachman. Here she is. Let's listen. We know there was slavery that was still tolerated when the nation began. We know that was an evil. And it was a scourge and a blot and a stain upon our history. But we also know that the very founders that wrote those documents worked tirelessly until slavery was no more in the United States. And I think it is high time that we recognize the contribution of our forebears who worked tirelessly, men like John Quincy Adams, who would not rest until slavery was extinguished in the country. Uh, Josh Marshall, uh, J uh, John Quincy Adams, of course, is the son of John Adams, one of the founding fathers. And I, and I understand, he, I know he was, I read about the Amistad and all that. He was the great lawyer on that case and everything. We all know that, defending the slaves who were revolting. But, you know, we did have from, a, you know, from the 1776 onward uh, till 1861, to the war, uh, we had slavery. And it wasn't until the Emancipation Proclamation emancipated those in the South. And eventually all slavery was outlawed under the 13th Amendment. How can somebody go out there, and she does this little scribble, you know, the founding fathers and she acts like she, they wrote to something down. Uh, she mispronounces words like you'd get wrong, like scourge and Iwo Jamma or something she said the other night. It's like she's never said these words before. So somebody's writing words that she's never pronounced before. Somebody's putting this stuff in Bachman's face and saying, read this, and not even saying it's scourge, not scourge. It's Iwo Jima. As every grade school kid in America knows, it's Iwo Jima. We've always heard it. But if you've never pronounced it before and never said it before, you say something like Iwo Jamma or something on here. Somebody, a friend of mine emailed me immediately and said, this person's incredible. So I don't want to go crazy about this, but it is insane that a political party would consider people like this for president. It's insane. So here we are again, and it's wacky time on the right. Palin's out there with her off-the-wall history of the space race in which the Ruskies beat us to the moon. You'd think the full mooners would get that one right. Must you, Ruskies. Dear Sarah, I thought you believed in American exceptionalism. We won that race, remember? One giant step for mankind. Where was your head at? Sorry, sore subject. As for her rival from Fargo country, Michelle Bachman, she believes slavery got dumped by those guys who wrote the Constitution. Why don't you read it, Congresswoman? Bring back the good old days. It says African-American Americans were three-fifths people back then. How's that for original intent, Justice Scalia? And